I am Jody Burley, and I am the ASL Community Relations Manager. I work here at the Wavefront Centre for Communication Accessibility. I was born deaf and I am a third generation deaf person, so I am strongly involved in the deaf community. I've used ASL all of my life. My name is Christopher Sutton. I'm the Chief Executive Officer here at Wavefront Centre for Communication and Accessibility. Living with profound hearing loss in my day-to-day -day life, I really struggle in the built environment. However, in my work life, I'm very fortunate because I do work in an environment that is extremely communication accessible. Entering into our facility, you're welcomed right away with receptions that can sign, or you can use Telcoil to be able to listen directly into your hearing technologies. You'll notice all the offices, for the most part, have carpets. That's absorbing the sound. If you look at the ceilings, the tiles that are being used are also absorbing the sounds. You'll probably notice how quiet these rooms are, and there's actually no echoes in here, and that's because of the acoustic abbreviation. I rely heavily on visuals. So for me, a priority is the wider hallways. So I'm able to communicate signing with somebody and looking at them walking down the hall at a comfortable pace. There's rounded corners in the building because I can't hear if someone's coming around. Because of the rounded corner, I have a few seconds to kind of bypass the person rather than walk into them. And so that's really great. The lighting has three settings. It's actually 25% brighter at the highest and it goes 5% lower at the lowest ratings. It helps people be able to read lips without background noise, uh, without shadows and so forth. You see there's a lot of glass panels which allows people to visually communicate using sign language. So you'll see in our meeting rooms and that, that there's a lot of open space that really gives um, what we call a deaf space. In a meeting room, which is probably the most challenging for most people with hearing loss because there are a number of people that are speaking over each other and so forth. We use FM systems, looping systems, so the roof is completely looped, which enables the person with a cochlear implant or hearing aid to get that feed directly without getting noise from backgrounds or other people around. I think some of the really other important things when you're looking at the built environment for someone with hearing loss is just making sure that it's fully accessible by having a lot of visual aspects visual fire alarms, visual clues, knockers, and so forth. Also, when you're walking past a corner, another great visual aid is a mirror so that you're able to see who's coming around the corner. We also have the window shades that you can pull up and down to make it brighter or darker. So there's a lot of things in this building that accommodate me a lot better. While this building was being constructed, the floor plan, I was able to take a look at it and provide some tips and they were able to accommodate it in that moment while they were developing that plan. Just a small change like that can make a big difference. Whether you're designing a brand new facility or you're retrofitting one, I think it's very critical that we use the lens of accessibility at the very front. Include people with disabilities um, around the design table to be taking courses on accessibility and what accessibility means in your profession. When you put it in play at the very beginning, it's actually something that's very easy to incorporate and it's not that expensive. And that actually makes environments better for everyone, including senior citizens and so forth. My life has been full of so many barriers being deaf and having very little accessibility and accommodations growing up. Living in environments and being able to work in environments that are fully accessible to make sure accessibility is a priority for everyone is such a critical thing.